Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. Have you ever been in a position where you've been on the receiving end of a narcissist's spiteful attitudes? If you have, you know that it can be very, very uh, difficult to the point of dangerous. When we talk about an, a narcissist who is in a spiteful mode toward you, we can say that, uh, that somehow you have sent them the message, and, and perhaps deliberately on your part, and by the way, good for you, that says, I'm not going to play along with all of the negative uh, energy that you're uh, throwing in my direction. You want me to play the role of enabler or you want me to just lay down and let you walk all over me. I'm not going to do that anymore. And when the narcissist becomes convinced that in fact you are moving away from them and the role they've ascribed to you, then here comes their spiteful attitude. The, 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 the narcissist spite can come from an attitude of, or the emotion of anger, but then that anger takes its own dark turn into this contemptuous, hateful, vengeful kind of a mindset. The narcissist who is feeling spite is thinking, I want you to hurt as badly as you have hurt me. And in fact, if I can make you hurt even worse, then I'll be more than happy to do that. Keep in mind, that's their way of responding to their own internal pain. They insist that they're going to destroy you. They have no introspection. They don't think in terms of, you know, what can I learn through this? All they know is I'm feeling spiteful and the best way for me to relieve myself of my, of my uh, energy that goes along with it is to destroy you. Obviously, that's a terrible strategy, but that's where they're coming from. Um, I want to walk you through some of what you need to understand regarding their spiteful attitude. The more you understand about who they are in that moment and in the, uh, the way that they're coming toward you, then it more it allows you to be objective in the way you're going to respond. And by the way, I'm going to shoot another video that's going to come up in just a few days uh, that talks about your spiteful feelings toward them. And we're going to see that there can be a really strong uh, uh, contrast in the way that they manage theirs versus how you can manage yours. But let's focus on where that narcissist is coming from right now. First and foremost, the thing I want you to know is when narcissists bring their spitefulness toward you, it, it's an indicator of what we classically refer to as narcissistic injury. Their self-esteem has been bruised. Uh, they feel exposed by you. When you say, I don't want to go along with you, what you're saying is, I don't think you're a very healthy person. And I don't think that you're good for me. And I don't think that uh, what, what you purport to be is anything that I want to have anything to do with. Now, they'll take their hurt feeling, but they'll fuse it to their uh, natural inclination toward entitlement. It's like, oh, wait just a minute. Um, you owe me. And if you don't comply with me, then uh, that means you're challenging me and nobody challenges me. Because you see, uh, I get to, to extract things from you. Of course, you don't get to do that in reverse. And, and as a result, uh, their fragile ego, that's really uh, the, the part that's uh, at play here, uh, is triggered. And they're thinking, I have to have your admiration. And if you don't give me your admiration, then I'm going to so make you suffer. Now, what, uh, what else this reveals then, it shows you that uh, no matter what kind of nice history you might have experienced with them, it was all phony. Narcissists look at you as, their, as, as a, a, a giver of narcissistic supply, period, end of discussion, that's it, that's all they think. In other words, uh, you have an assigned role and you did not uh, live into your assigned role. And by the way, they're not going to like this, but that's actually a backwards compliment to you. It's like, I don't want to be that kind of person. Uh, it's like, good for you that you thought that way, but uh, they saw you as supply and your way of uh, your response of not going along with that has cut off that sense of supply. That having happened then, fear takes over. 
with the narcissist. Now, they won't say, I feel fearful. What they'll do is they'll say, I feel angry. Uh, but the bottom line is, you see, by, by you saying, I don't want to participate with your dysfunction, you're more or less implying, I've, I've seen what you look like with your mask off. You're exposed, and I, and I see how disgusting you can be. And so the narcissist is thinking, uh, I can't let that happen. And in the process, one of the things that you've discovered about the narcissist is their ineptitude. Now, the narcissist, uh, you know, by virtue of having to have your admiration to hold themselves up, uh, they, they have such an emptiness on the inside and their anger when exposed uh, implies, well, I don't know what to do when you don't agree with me. I'm inept when it comes to that skill set. I can't manage pain. I can't manage conflict. I don't know what to do. I have to have that public persona, and the fact that you've seen behind it scares me to death. And again, of course, they won't say that. But then taking it further, that fear then causes them to cl uh, claim the victim status. Look what you've done to me. Look at how miserable you're making my life. Of course, they forget the fact that they set the whole thing up to collapse by uh, having all their improper treatment toward you. They blame you for feeling as miserable as they do. When in fact, in your calling them out, you're saying, no, <laughs> that misery was standing on the inside of you before I ever showed up. Now that I'm saying I don't want to participate, then somehow it becomes your fault anyway. Uh, go figure on that. Now, uh, the, uh, the, the fact that uh, narcissists will come out with this spiteful, angry reaction, uh, they, they, uh, want, they, they want you to think that they are the gold standard. They're the one that holds on to uh, what's right and good. All of this harsh, harsh emotion that they bring and, and saying they want to destroy you reveals they don't have good reasoning. They don't have sound insight or awareness. They honestly don't know how to take a, a relationship that's not really functioning well and break it down objectively and say, what can I learn? They, they don't have that, uh, that uh, reasoning and insightful capacity. And so what they'll do is they'll focus outward, which is you, because they don't know how to go inward. So uh, they hold on to their disbelief, their, their shocks, like, I can't believe you're doing this uh, to me. And then what they do is they, uh, like I say, they've transferred or they want to transfer their pain into you. And what it tells us is they have a deep history of feeling a lot of pain. Other individuals have also let them know, I don't care for what you bring to the equation. I don't like what, how you manage life. And, and as a result, uh, they've already had that experience. And then when you come along, it, it dredges up those old memories. And basically, their spite is tied to the fear of their abandonment. Um, the, the implication is, I don't want people to leave me. I don't want people to, to declare that I'm no good. And so uh, in their spite, then they'll say, hey, you know what? Uh, you weren't all that great anyway. Why would I need you? Which is the old uh, member Aesop's fable and uh, the sour grapes. Oh, the grapes are probably sour anyway. They'll try to make up a narrative uh, negatively about you when in fact, no, it's, it's their fear of abandonment and their fear of, of uh, being a nobody. They already had their defenses up before you showed up as evidenced by the fact that they needed to have that false self. Once uh, you say, I don't, I don't want to go along with you, then those defenses become so impenetrable that we can almost say it's 100% uh, likely that you are not going to penetrate that. You're going to be heavily criticized. There is going to be hardly any room for restoration. You need to go ahead and, and uh, uh, you know, make room for that and uh, their spiteful feelings can sometimes last for decades because, you see, that's all they have to hold on to to remind themselves that they're somebody. I was able to destroy. I was able to tell that person they're a nobody. That makes me a force to be reckoned with. And I'm thinking, how pitiable. How absolutely pitiable. You know, I'm sorry that they have this venom on the inside, and I'm sorry that it gives rise to them spewing that venom all over you. Um, but uh, to, to my point, uh, they don't have enough insight to be able to come to terms with that, which is where the, the spite just continues. Now, as you see this and understand it for what it is, uh, let's, let's go with one uh, huge um, different thought, and that is 
you can have reason and you can have insight. And so I'm hoping that you'll, uh, instead of just getting pulled into all the subjective emotion that goes along with their spiteful reactions to you, I'm hoping you can decide, you know, uh, I, I see you as being somebody that doesn't know how to do life well. That's an objective truth. I get it. And that being the case, uh, I'm going to drop any kind of illusion that I can or should make you, the narcissist, think and feel any differently. Now, you're going to have to make room for the fact that some of the intensity of their emotion is going to continue and it will hurt you. And uh, we, we can't make that not be the case. But in time, I'm hoping that you can move on away from that individual to the point that where you can find your better alternatives. And frankly, the narcissist is probably going to find an, their next victim, their next person that they're going to try to charm and all the rest. And then uh, the same thing will probably happen there. And then they're going to go through the cycle all over and over again. Basically, what you'll need to do is just jump off that merry-go-round. Um, your best chance for healing comes when you say, I'm sticking with my uh, original agreement. I don't want to play the role that they've assigned to me. I don't want to be inside that person's circle, nor do I want them inside my circle. I'm going to go ahead and A, I'm going to reconnect with me, my dignity, my respect, my civility, and then I'm going to connect with other individuals who know how to do that along with me, and I'm going to run parallel with those kind of people. Narcissists in their spite and then their commitment to holding on to the venom will prove over and over that they are indeed inept. I don't know how to go in that path with you. And I'm hoping your response can be, yes, I see that, which is why I'm gonna continue my journey elsewhere. Um, I, I'm hoping that, uh, that you can decide whatever pronouncements they make uh, about you are coming from their place of unresolved strain and tension. Don't buy into it. And like I said, I'm gonna have another video and we're gonna be talking about your reverse feelings of spite. But the bottom line is you don't have to let their pain and their transfer of responsibility over into you to become your truth. It's part of their false self. No, thank you. I'm not participating. Now, I hope this gives you some good awareness of what you're dealing with. Uh, knowledge is power. The more you understand these things, the more you can objectively move forward. Uh, as a therapist, it would be so refreshing for me to talk with individuals who were going through this and for them to realize I don't have to let them write my script. And so uh, I hope you've hit the subscribe button. If you haven't, I encourage you to do so because we're going to keep more videos coming your direction. I'm hoping to uh, encourage you toward insight and your own personal healthy adjustments. Now, uh, there are times when you've been through something like this that therapy could be good for you. I'm a, I'm a retired therapist now, but obviously I believe in it greatly. You know, I've been sponsored for years by the people at betterhelp.com. It's an online therapy resource. The link is below. You can go through that and check out what they have there for you. It can be so helpful when you have, you're receiving these harsh and negative messages from someone uh, for the, a therapist to work you, uh, walk you through with that with an arm of encouragement around you, letting it be known. Uh, they can be unhealthy. You don't have to join them. And if that's something that you can use, please go through the link and get the assistance that you would uh, most richly deserve. Also, I put together courses. And the courses are meant to be uh, very thought provoking. Each course, uh, it's like signing up for a long online class. It's very extensive. And each course has at least 25 videos with written uh, documents per videos, guided questions. And it can, uh, uh, can be a very therapeutic kind of resource for you. We have Ready, Set, Connect about making healthy connections free to be finding yourself despite the controllers. This is me about establishing your boundaries. I also have a different format in my webinars and they're on the website, uh, survivingnarcissism.tv. They're 90 minute presentations on various topics along with my articles, ac access to my uh, podcast, books, etc. So please, uh, we have plenty of resources to make yourself available to that. The narcissist is caught. They're trapped inside their own spite um, you don't have to uh, go along with it. I'm hoping you can decide I'm going to take a different path. And in doing so, it positions you to be a much more steady alternative. And I hope that in the end, you're able to find your peace that they're not able to share in. But I do hope, in fact, that you are going to be a person of true peace.